Recently, well, over the last couple of years, we recognize that just having a user interface is not really good enough. You can't talk about user interfaces anymore. Everybody talks about user interfaces, frankly. I haven't seen you, but now you have been popping out of the booth, right? Yes. Literally. Yes, literally. How come? Well, you know, uh, about a year and a half ago, we changed the name of the company. Previously, we were called Pantel International, and we, we've been at this show many, many years as yep. Pantel International. Um, we recently made some inroads in uh, public safety and also the utility and transportation space, and we just decided the time was right that we would uh, make a, a bigger show at the show. So yeah, speak. and it works, right? Oh, yes, very much so. We're, we're amazed at the uh, reception that we've gotten. Uh, lots and lots of interest and lots of activity here in the booth. Um, I mean, it could be any better. Yeah. So, can you explain to the people who don't know your company exactly what you're doing? We actually acquired a company called Intertalk um, uh, back in 2003. Previous to that, I had designed an IP-based console system, but when we would go out and talk to people about it, people back in those days in the 90s would say, what do you mean, IP-based? Yeah. How can you have a, uh, a console system that's public safety grade that, that uses IP to carry voice? Um, but we took uh, Intertalk, which was an old-fashioned switch-based analog uh, console system, and we took the ideas that we'd had in PowerSpeak as the name of the product that we did earlier, and we moved them and amalgamated them together. So now it, it, we've come to a logical evolution of that idea. I am curious how that looks like because you have an example here at the booth, right? We do. Can we take a look at it? Sure. Shall we, yes, shall we walk to it? Okay, that's that's good. That's good. So where are we going? Go that way. That way. That way. Just go around. Just around the corner. Right here. All right. We'll take the long route. So. All right. Oh, this actually is the uh, right here is the. Uh, uh, a uh, large screen um, version of it. The, uh, this product, which we call Enlight, actually runs on a browser. So uh, we're seeing it here, and as you can see, there are many different elements. We've got everything from Twitter feeds in the middle here, as you can see. We've got uh, different types of weather maps showing the weather, for instance, in Nova Scotia, which is right now where I come from, minus eight degrees. And I bet you anything is snowing. That's degrees, right? Yeah, that's that, Celsius. That's, that's, yeah, real degrees. That's <laughs> Celsius. Celsius. Right, okay. <laughs> that's right. Um, and then we have got a video feed here and uh, other different types of maps, but the actual content you see on the screen here is totally configurable. So the uh, system manager can actually force a configuration or even better, he can actually provide some parts of it that are fixed and some parts of it that the dispatcher themselves actually manage. So because they can manage their own uh, resources, they can put it wherever they like, they can change the fonts and some of the different aspects of it. Uh, up, up here, for instance, this area right here is a, 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 an active area that shows the radio communications product that we the channels currently that are available to use. Right now there aren't any, but you can put the radio channels up there. And the radio channels that we can interface to include land mobile radio, just standard old-fashioned analog base stations. But we can also do DMR, and we can do uh, Tetra and P25, and uh, we can bring all these different uh, diverse uh, formats and protocols together onto a single dashboard. And of course the dashboard also allows patching between all these things. So we can collapse a single LMR channel with a, perhaps a DMR group and maybe even a P25 group into a single, what looks like a single resource. Anybody who speaks on one channel, all the people who are part of that group, uh, even uh, across different channels and different formats, hear each other. And of course the dispatcher hears them all. Feed, 
radios, whatever available, weather, uh, all traffic, kinds of stuff. Traffic, all, all the different all types triggers from police officers that y if yes. they if they pull out their gun out of the holster, right. it's right. triggers. Right. So how big does the screen need to be then? Well, it's interesting because <laughs> how many how many views do yeah. you need to have? Well, how it, many can you handle? It's really interesting because you can have a huge big screen like this where you can see you can put a whole bunch of different things on. And what we what we uh, uh, the way we characterize it, we characterize it about focus. So there's focus. There are things that we have to be focused on as part of a mission. Along the bottom here, there are missions, and we can do contact switching between missions quite quickly. There are things on the screen here. Uh, you have taps. Wait a minute. You have to. Have, you can tap airports. You can tap another tap. Yes. Another tap. That's another right. tap. You can add a tap over there. That's, that's right. That's right. So you, uh, you can manage the uh, missions that you have. So if you have a mission, you know, a dispatcher might have a number of things on the go at the same time. Well, uh, being able to do a contact switch between the missions instantly is, is what that allows them to have. We have some parts of the screen, maybe there's, there was an interest. It's not mission focused, but there's an interest. It may come into focus, you know, as, as different things occur. So we have the ability to be able to put uh, boxes up here that are of interest and boxes that we are going to focus on. Now, you asked about the screen size. One of the things over years so that we, we, like we like to say about our, our, ourselves as a company is that we're kind of user interface experts. So we, we do user interfaces. However, recently, well, over the last couple of years, we recognize that just having a user interface is not really good enough. You can't talk about user interfaces anymore. Everybody talks about user interfaces, frankly. Rather, when we speak about different size screens, we want to talk about the user experience. So we want the experience, even though we have this huge canvas here that we can put all these different things on, we want to be able to take the same kind of feeling, the same kind of, of ability that you have in this canvas and take it to a much smaller one. So for instance, we can put in light on a smartphone or on a tablet. Even though it's a much smaller screen, and obviously we can't have as many uh, things on the go at the same time, we can still have that same user experience whereby you can have things that are in focus and things that are of interest. There's another aspect to this project as we're moving forward with it, and that is using artificial intelligence, natural language processing, uh, video processing, and so on, being able to represent things, for instance, in 3D, um, uh, in using various different data formats and so on. All of these things allow us to be able to provide the dispatcher with the right information they need at the right time and in the right format. And that's that's kind of our motto. <laughs> well, where's the limit? There Strict, is no limit. Strictly right? speaking. There is no limit. <laughs> because one of the things about this is, of course, Enlight works in the cloud. Yeah. And all the heavy lifting we can do in, a, in the back office. And Amazon Wireless we can do it or whatever. Um, because of that, uh, really, there is no limit. We can do amazing things. Well, the things. limit is, is how much you can take as an operator, probably, right? Yeah, how much your, your brain can yeah. handle before it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's all try that out, right? Okay, well, thank you so much. So, one of the nicest things about this control room solution is that it can access different control rooms. They are part of a program that supports each other. Um, in other ways, if there's something happening on the airport, an officer has to speak to somebody in a foreign language, he doesn't understand that person, he can rely on that control room solution and divert that call or that conversation to somebody else within the United States or wherever, and who can take over that call and can handle that situation. I think that shines a total new light on control room communications. Uh, integrating so many new things into a control room and use each other's knowledge to make sure you have a safer environment. So what we're, what we're attempting to do is to evolve the dispatch function into the next generation. And the next generation of dispatch is going to be more about information processing, information handling, and about being able, again, to provide that right information I talked about at the right time, the right place, in the right format.